It's called gentrification, and it can be a controversial topic. It's when rehabbing an urban neighborhood leads to displacement of current residents simply because they're priced out. Carolee McGrath sat down with Jonathan Wynn, a professor of sociology at UMass Amherst, to learn more about gentrification and how it relates to both Western Mass and the nation. Well, it's a complicated term. I think we need to be really precise when we talk about what gentrification is. Um, a, a sociologist named Ruth Glass in 1961 coined the term gentrification. What she meant to say was uh, rich folks moving into urban areas. Uh, what it tends to be used as today is not just uh, rich folk tending to be disproportionately white, but also displacing populations that tend to be lower income and non-white populations. Uh, we could also talk about gentrification as being a change in the culture, the values, the practices of a community, and how those might be uprooted and changed because of incoming populations, again, that tend to be white. P uh, please describe some of the places around the country, like Brooklyn comes to mind mm -hmm. as, as one example. Where are some other examples of this happening? Uh, gentrification does happen in lots of places, and certainly the term is being used all over the country, right? We think of uh, San Francisco as being a place uh, due to the tech boom where uh, rents are extraordinarily high and it's displacing people who of lower income, uh, lower income households. Uh, but there's lots of places where we talk about gentrification. Um, Philadelphia, for example, is a place where we, there's a lot of talk about gentrification. And some research that's recently come out has shown that gentrification may be, uh, the impact of it is not as severe as we once thought. Okay, so what, what's happening in Western Massachusetts as far as this goes? Uh, well, there's, Western Massachusetts is made up of a lot of different kinds of communities, and so I think thinking about gentrification in the broad way and being able to apply it in these different kinds of contexts will be really instructive. So uh, a place like North Ant Adams, for example, uh, you have rich folks who are moving into North Adams uh, attracted to Mass Mocha as being kind of a cultural engine there. And you have a lot of available vacant housing there. And the Berkshire Eagle uh, published a, uh, an article that had people on on record is saying we could actually use more folks moving in here. We have the available housing stock. Uh, you look at a place like East Hampton where you have folks from Northampton and Amherst moving to lower income properties and what they're doing is not displacing uh, persons of color but they're displacing lower income whites. So it's a different kind of gentrification than maybe we think of when it comes to gentrification. Uh, but then we have uh, cities like uh, Springfield and Holyoke, which tend to be disproportionately non-white populations. Um, and there's a different kind of concern there, where you really do have a concern over displacement of uh, those populations for uh, new folks coming in. But wouldn't cities want to have people with money, regardless of you know what your race or ethnic background is, you want people with money to come in, to buy houses, to live there, to you know, go to the shops downtown. Isn't that good for the economy? Yeah, absolutely. I think that there's good reason for gentrification. Um, there's there, there's uh, increased amenities. There's uh, increases in the housing prices. Uh, you have two pe people coming in and going to the restaurants and things like that. And just the real concern is, is that when you have uh, new folks coming in, spending money, that's great, uh, but not at the cost of displacing other populations. And so there's lots of strategies that we can use to kind of ameliorate the concerns of uh, or the effects of gentrification um, by being sure to safeguard the uh, more vulnerable populations in these cities. So what are some of the strategies that you would use? Because I'm sure if, if somebody came into a neighborhood that mm -hmm. um, perhaps, you know, maybe needs houses rehabbed, mm -hmm. um, the people who are currently own or live there, I mean, mm -hmm. they would benefit, I would think, mm -hmm. if mm -hmm. the house next door to them is suddenly, you know, made better and mm -hmm. more livable. Yeah. Um, there's... Well, I can talk about the strategies, but but I, just on that last point that you made, I think is an important one, is to note that um, gentrification does have some benefits, and it's important to think about the benefits of what that, that might be. And it might have benefits for folks who are lower income. Just as you said, the property value of your house might increase if the property uh, value of, of the house next door increases as well. Um, that is assuming that that property is owned by the occupant, right? Um, but what Studies have shown, uh, there's a Columbia professor, Lance Freeman, and um, actually the Federal Bank uh, in Philadelphia, have looked at what the effects are of gentrification and if it really does push folks out. And uh, Lance Freeman studies have shown that uh, it doesn't, that, that uh, poor folks are less likely to move 
in gentrifying neighborhoods than folks who are in non-gentrifying neighborhoods. So the question you might ask is why? And the reason why would be um, that there are increased amenities, uh, you have uh, better emergency services, uh, the government's paying attention to your community, you have new, the parks and facilities are being taken care of, your property values might increase, the education might increase. Uh, if, you, if you do live in those communities, you might want to be holding on for a little bit, you're willing to hold on to your house for a little bit longer, maybe increase the value of your house a little bit because you want to sell it further down the road. Right. For a good price, price. Yeah. right, and so displacement is 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 an interesting question because it, you you might those somebody if they are lucky enough to own their house, they can um, actually trade up and, and and benefit from gentrification, assuming that they do own that property. And I know you've been doing a lot of studies um, on this topic. Mm -hmm. Tell us what's happening in Hartford, which is you know mm -hmm. just to our south. Mm -hmm. So I've been doing some research in Hartford's specifically around uh, the area of Hartford Hospital, and look at which is called uh, Frog Hollow. And Frog Hollow has uh, some wonderful housing stock. Some of it is a little depleted, but um, there's the, what they call perfect sixes, which are these beautiful houses. And, and the houses look really good, and there's a, an increased property um, vacancy rates in Hartford. Uh, home ownership rates are about half what they are in Springfield. And the folks that I speak with, they, they're concerned about the idea of gentrification, which is all the folks who live in, or I'm sorry, work in the insurance companies and live in the suburbs, uh, getting tired of the commute and eventually deciding, yes, I want to move into, into the neighborhoods. And in fact, uh, the Southside Neighborhood Alliance, SINA, Southside Institution Neighborhood Alliance in um, Frog Hollow is a partnership with Trinity, Hartford, and um, Hartford Hospital, and they are trying to incentivize some of their employees to live in that neighborhood to try and like live local, work local. And what they, people that I speak with say is that they could use a little gentrification. They could use more people moving into their neighborhood. And they don't see it necessarily as being a negative thing because there's a little chance of displacement at this point in time. That's a problem further down the road is what people tell me. When we look at this uh, in years to come in Western Mass, you know, what do you expect to see in cities like Springfield? There's a, there's a lot going on in mm -hmm. Springfield with Casino mm -hmm. in particular. So, yeah. so what do you see down the road? Uh, the city of Springfield's Office of Housing published a report last year that said that the city is largely built out, which is to say that there isn't much place for new urban development for housing, right? And yet still has a 30% poverty rate, which means that there is the potential for um, folks coming in of higher means and displacing folks who maybe are um, our more vulnerable populations. And the National um, Low Income Housing Coalition offers a battery or toolkit of different kinds of strategies that cities like Springfield can use to make sure that, that um, vulnerable populations aren't displaced in the way that, that we've been speaking about. So is there a correlation between higher education and gentrification and looking specifically at Northampton, mm -hmm. you know, which used to be blue collar, mm -hmm. and Amherst, which was more farming. Mm -hmm. Yeah, um, the Federal Reserve Bank of Philadelphia, this report that I spoke of, um, they looked at the different neighborhoods around Philadelphia and they tried to determine what are the neighborhoods that are being gentrified specifically. And what they found was is that more often than not, it was the neighborhoods that immediately surrounded Temple and um, the University of Pennsylvania. And so um, what is driving gentrification tends to be these anchor institutions. Um, so that's why the idea of Trinity and Hartford Hospital working as an engine for um, housing redevelopment in, in Hartford might be a concern. And so absolutely, higher education and other anchor institutions are part of the drivers of gentrification, at least what the studies seem to be showing.